Welcome aboard the Lux Labella, a ship we have built to help us navigate through the perilous galaxy of the 41st millennium. Today, we will continue our journey exploring the Tyranid race and its many different bioforms, organisms created specifically to perform the different tasks required by the wider Tyranid fleets to expand and devour everything in their path across the entire galaxy. Even though each and every creature is nothing more than a single cell in the living system of a superorganism, the numbers of the Tyranids are so great that it is impossible to count them all. Their swarms are so vast that they obscure even the constellations, and their purpose is to consume it all. How is it that the Tyranids are able to consume entire planets and eat stars? In this episode, we will explore all the stages of this terrible process, beginning with the infiltration of specific organisms and culminating with the consumption of the planet itself. After eating all of the biological and organic material on a recently invaded world, Tyranid hive fleets typically move in ad hoc formations known as tendrils, migrating to nearby planetary systems and reproducing many times their initial number. When a hive fleet comes across a prey world, they do not attack for the purpose of gaining territory, nor do they do so out of a sense of pride, revenge, or glory. Instead, they invade in order to collect valuable biomass that they use to satisfy their voracious and endless appetite. It is a matter of survival. A never-ending supply of food is necessary for the Tyranids, not just to maintain the health of the high fleets, but to also breed new creatures. Hence, when a high fleet invades a world that is abundant in life, every action that is taken by each and every Tyranid creature is home sharpened to a common objective. The complete and efficient assimilation of that world's organic populations, ecosystems, and bioresources. In order to achieve this objective, the Hive Fleet raises an arsenal of varied bioorganisms with the specific goal of vanquishing any and all protectors of the prey world before the globe is stripped of all of its biomatter and consumed in its entirety. Since many planets and locations across the galaxy are inhabited by all manners of Xenos races, humanoids, and creatures that intend to defend their planets in case of invasion, the bioorganisms that now conform the Tyranids are a very extended and diverse roster of creatures created to kill and bring low all manners of foes. They have simply adapted to overcome any defense, to hack down any defender that would stand in their way. They have adapted to devour worlds. They have evolved to become the apex predator. Just as what happened with the world of Tyran Prime, which was consumed in its entirety, and left drifting in space as a giant dead rock. When a Tyranid Hive Fleet invades a prey world with the intention of stripping all life from the planet, it accomplishes it in several separate stages. Each new wave of the invasion brings with it a new group of biological nightmares that have been fine-tuned plant the seeds of destruction and death. In a matter of days, the planet that may have been previously prosperous is completely bereft of every last trace of organic matter. After being temporarily satisfied, the hive 
quickly leaves in search of its next target, looking for its next planet to consume, leaving behind nothing but an empty shell, a new dead star. Inquisitor Fidus Kripman made it his life goal to study the Tyranid threat. He was the first to discover this horrible menace, and he made its presence known to the galaxy, and then became a keen observer of the terrible Tyrannic Wars, and then enlisted many others to this mission. His goal was a simple one, to understand this world-eating Xenos plague so that humanity could stem the alien tide and then purge it with the Emperor's eternal flame. But that goal cannot be accomplished without the sacrifice of many lives across countless battles, using each as an opportunity to gather data on what hideous forms these Tyranids can produce and what their capabilities are. Alongside many others, Kryptman and his allies discovered that the Tyranids had an extremely rapid rate of evolution, creating new variations of their forms to suit whatever obstacle they came against. These are called bioforms by the researching community. It is believed that understanding these bioforms will prove to be the key in discovering if the Tyranids have a weakness that can be effectively exploited. Unfortunately, it is also believed that more sacrifice will be needed. More blood will be spilt before any light of hope is truly found. Now, let's dive into the stages of a Tyranid invasion, and let's explore the different bioforms the Tyranids use to accomplish their hellish goal. There is a cancer eating at the Imperium. With each decade, it advances deeper, leaving drained, dead worlds in its wake. This horror, this abomination, has thought and purpose which functions on an unimaginable galactic scale. And all we can do is try to stop the swarms of bioengineered monsters it unleashes upon us by instinct. We have given the horror a name to salve our fears. We call it the Tyranid Race. But if it is aware of us, at all, it must know us only as prey. Our YouTube channel is devoted to exploring the innumerable interesting details of the expansive Warhammer universe. If you are enjoying the content, please consider supporting us by commenting giving us a like and sharing this episode with your fellow Warhammer fans. Small actions like these are the ones that help us greatly with the YouTube algorithm, and it helps the content get recommended and reach more people. A massive thank you to all of our patrons and YouTube channel members. Your support enables us to keep providing you the greatest Warhammer content we possibly can. Thank you very much, and we hope you enjoy this lore presentation. The infiltration process is the initial step in any Tyranid invasion. This phase is distinguished by its subtlety. At this point, the Xenos assess the planet's viability for an attack and begin infecting the native life forms. This method entails sending out stealthy, quick moving creatures to explore the planets and collect information about it. Some of these abominations are referred to as gene stealers, and they serve as the forerunners of the Tyranid Swarm. Gene stealers are incredibly adaptable creatures who are able to conceal themselves in any setting. They have long, extremely sharp claws that are capable of ripping through armor, and they can infect other species with their genetic material. Because of this, they are able to produce hybrids that are composed of both Tyranid and host species. 
Before directly attacking any defender, the gene stealers adapt themselves well to their surroundings. Once they have established a foothold in the world, they immediately set about forming cults among the native species. The members of these cults are infected with tyrannid genetic material, and their mission is to prepare the world for the arrival of the swarm of tyrannids. It can be said that the gene stealer cult has three main goals that it strives to accomplish. First, it gives the Tyranids the opportunity to collect intelligence about the planet and the defenses it has, which will give them an advantage when they start their assault. Second, it establishes a network of infected individuals who will attempt to weaken the planet's defenses from the inside, making it simpler for the Tyranids to take the world. And finally, it supplies a source of biomass for the Tyranids to ingest once they have finally and successfully completed their invasion of the planet. This whole process can take years to bring into fruition. From the contamination of an infected subject all the way to the deadly and the sudden rise of a fully-fledged gene stealer cult. Foul creatures known as gene stealers infiltrate unvigilant worlds. A patriarch arises from the population's subverted flesh and projects a psychic beacon to draw the high fleet ever closer. While this happens, other creatures are also in action. Vanguard drone ships are able to stealthily explore new star systems thanks to their high speed their comparatively diminutive size, and the low psychic and propulsion signatures they emit. It is a common practice for a Vanguard drone ship to offload some of its cargo onto the surface of a potentially fit planet, and then immediately flee the system in order to investigate potential targets in other star systems. One of the creatures that are commonly dropped by these ships are the infamous Lictors. After being dropped off by a drone ship, the Lictors waste no time in venturing out into the uncharted regions of the newly discovered planet. They examine the atmosphere, the availability of minerals, and the features of all types of life using their feeder tendrils. In addition, these vicious predators seek for solitary creatures and even sapient beings to consume while simultaneously absorbing the memories of the prey they kill. As soon as a synaptic node is within range, a compilation of all of this vital information is performed and then transmitted to the hive mind. This helps the approaching Tyranid fleet determine what the weather conditions will be the type of terrain the planet has, and ultimately, what types of bioorganisms it must unleash once the point of full assault begins. Any lictor that can be effectively destroyed prior to the start of a full Tyranid invasion can significantly slow down the attack, as the invading Xenos will be less optimized for the ecosystem of the planet they are attacking and key information about potential targets or dangers are lost. All of these organisms have physiological abilities geared for concealment. These abilities are fully utilized so that they can safely study the natural surroundings at first. Because there are frequently only a few Tyranids involved at the stage, these specimens demonstrate an unusual level of self-preservation. These are agile and secretive creatures who conduct their operations with the stealth, concentration, and effectiveness that comes naturally to creatures of their kind, for which the conservation of energy is a vital component of the survival strategy.
The arrival of the Hive ship and the vessels that are escorting it reveals the beginning of the next stage of the invasion. The world of the prey is suddenly cast in a massive shadow that blocks out the sun, and the sound of flapping wings can be heard throughout the atmosphere. The terrified inhabitants of the planet look up to witness sky swarms from the Hive Fleet descending upon them. Identified points of resistance are attacked and swarmed with the flying monstrosities, while they create a screen for the rest of the upcoming Tyranid broods. But just as this happens, something terrible is done by the Great Devourer. The approaching Hive ship, which acts as a powerful synaptic node of the Hive mind, is able to interfere with the warp in an area that extends for several light years. This is a suffocating, psychic signal that covers entire star systems and interferes with all types of warp travel and communication. As an effect of this, it is often too late for a planetary defense station or defending fleet to send out an astropathic message or other psychic cry for help. The planet that is prey to the Tyranids is suddenly isolated and condemned to face alone the swarm that is coming against them. Emperor's mercy, they blocked us out. We're on our own. As the sky darkens even further with the arrival of more bioships, mycetic spores and sky swarms are being constantly unleashed upon the surface of the planets. Gargoyles are a ferocious tyranid bioform that has wings, and they are frequently the first species of tyranids to be spotted when the tyranids attack a planet. It would appear that their primary mission is to hunt down the adversary and spread fear and confusion among their ranks. Gargoyles are designed to engage in ranged warfare, yet they are not completely useless in close quarters fighting. They have the ability to spit a poisonous fluid, which they automatically direct at the eyes of their opponents in order to cause them to go blind. After that, they relentlessly attack their adversary with their talons and barb-tipped tails until either they or their target are killed. Present in this aerial assault are also harpies, ferocious tyranids that take the form of flying creatures. They are larger and more powerful than their closely related bioform, the gargoyle. The majority of their attacks are directed to hostile aircraft as well as ground-based anti-aircraft systems. The harpies swarm around their targets, tearing them apart with their talons and blasting bioacetic spines from their backs. Hit-and-run strategies are utilized by these creatures in order to inflict the most amount of damage possible upon ground soldiers and vehicles once the air defenses have been rendered ineffective. Even bigger than the harpies, are the fearsome Hive Crones, flying monstrosities that are used to fight against the most dangerous of weapons that the defending faction has at their disposal for aerial dominance. They are able to fly at high speeds and maneuver with remarkable dexterity, making it incredibly difficult for ground-based anti-aircraft fire to be effective against them. They dive at enemy aircraft destroying them with their bioacidic spines and tearing them to pieces with their talons as they come in for the kill. The mycetic spores that are also being unleashed contain various types of creatures within them. Some of these, such as the various strains of gaunts, start making preparations right away with the upcoming attacks. Alternate strains start to make their way underground by digging tunnels, creating routes for the other creatures to attack from. Others, like the Molochs and Trigons, start burying deeper to plant the spores that will later grow into gigantic capillary towers.
After the Tyranid forces have successfully established a footing on the surface of the planet, they start the process of wiping out any resistance standing against them. The planet itself seems to come alive in pain. The ground trembles in revolts as innumerable creatures emerge from below the surface, and the air chokes with millions upon millions of flying creatures and spores. There are never-ending swarms of the lesser bioforms, such as gaunts, gargoyles, and gene stealers, who rampage across the air, the land, and the water. The number of gaunts that emerge from seemingly everywhere seem to be infinite for the defenders, who are often overwhelmed by the sheer force of numbers being thrown at them. Capillary towers, which range in height from tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of meters tall, emerge from the surface of the planet behind the front lines of the battle. These towers collect the biomass that the swarm has previously ingested and then uses it to create more creatures to take part in the assault. And during this point, the cults created by the gene stealers rise up with full power, striking key points in the defense system, killing important figures, and ambushing any unsuspecting forces creating further chaos and confusion within the defenders. Then, they join the Tyranids in the offensive. The sheer number of Tyranid organisms attacking at once means that they are able to quickly overcome even the most robust defenses, drowning their opponents in a torrent of chitin, talons, flesh, and blood. The hive mind allows the massive horde to coordinate their assaults with deadly efficiency. Synapse creatures are deployed to ensure this. Creatures such as hive tyrants, zoanthropes, and tyranid warriors, amongst others, transmit the hive mind's will to the lesser creatures, ensuring that the swarms act as a single, unstoppable entity. First, let's discuss the Zoanthropes, also classified as Tyrannicus animus abhorrens. These creatures are amongst the strangest of the Tyranid Swarm's myriad breeds. They are extremely potent psychers, and it appears that they were designed to serve as living conduits for the deeply focused will of the hive mind. So extreme is their genetic development that they have atrophied bodies and swollen brains that are entirely energized by pure psychic power. A zoanthrope can fire extremely powerful warp blasts at their opponents. These creatures prefer to fight at long ranges. Due to the physical weaknesses and deformities, they can only move by psychically levitating themselves, drifting across the battlefield to rain bolts of incandescent warp energy down on their enemies, and coordinating the movements of the Horde by extending the Hive Mind's will. Ah, can't you feel it? It's like a claw crushing my mind in its grasp, squeezing my brain between its talons. Ah, I can feel it scratching behind my eyes. Tearing at my sanity! Ah! Emperor! Save us! It has been documented by Imperial psychers that despite their immense power, zoanthropes sometimes seem to be victims to their own massive energy reserves, and there have been several reports of them psychically burning out, falling limply to the ground. But don't be fooled by this fact or their physical limitations, as they project a constant bubble of warp energy around them, turning aside even the strongest of physical blows. When a zoanthrope is killed, a psychic shockwave propagates as a result. Lesser tyranid creatures that are within the synapse range 
will automatically either break or flee as swiftly as they can. That's why dealing with these types of creatures is of utmost importance to any defender. But not only these organisms transmit the hive mind's will to the lesser creatures. There are others also ensuring that the swarms act as a single unstoppable entity. Like the infamous Maliceptor, which is a recently discovered bioform in the tyrannid roster of creatures, as they aren't deployed often. These colossal creatures combine the brute strength of the stronger bioforms with the psychic might of a zoanthrope. These terrible creations can crush its enemies with both its claws and the formidable power of its mind. Being an adaptation of the zoanthrope genus, the Maliceptor has also given most of its upper body to a massed brain-like organ that acts as a raw, living conduit for destructive psychic powers. Another type of creature that helps to keep the momentum of the assault is the massive Tervigon. These are less of a synapse creature and more of an assault platform. Their massive bodies are shielded by a towering spined carapace that protects their soft flesh beneath. They serve as a living incubator capable of spawning hundreds of termagants ready to eviscerate and devour their enemies. These powerful monsters often surprise their enemies by the sudden army sprouting out of its underside, quickly overwhelming even the most prepared of combatants. The best method for the defenders for effectively dispatching a Tervagon is to concentrate all firepower on it as quickly as possible in order to slay it before its termagants can have a chance to spawn and create a deadly, unstoppable swarm. All termagants employ their ranged weaponry to decimate the enemy at the front lines of battle, while hormagons fiercely engage any opposition in close combat. These xenos can be discovered in swarms of tens or even hundreds of thousands, along with other gaunt species, under the control of Tyranid warriors. The Tyranid warrior's brood, one of the many Tyranid creatures, is a vital part of their invading arm, offering tactical adaptability and devastating prowess on the battlefield. They are formidable and lethal beings in of themselves, but they also serve as Tyranid synapse creatures, guiding lesser Tyranid bioforms and acting as the central nodes of a Tyranid hive mind's telepathic command system. It is argued that the Tyranid warrior is the most adaptable form of any Tyranid species yet encountered. They are able to equip themselves with a vast range of lethal biomechanical weaponry, in addition to other modifications, which enables them to fill a number of roles in combat situations. They are easily able to provide their fellow attacking creatures with either high volume close quarter support or long range assistance. Every one of the myriad of Tyranid warrior creatures is a killing machine perfectly adapted to slaughter its victims. They are the ultimate predators, and we are their prey. These are large creatures, taller than regular space marines, and there are hundreds of different known variations of Tyranid warriors. These organic killing machines can combine flying, walking, or leaping biomorphs with biomechanical symbionts that function as ranged weapons, like as the Death Spitter, or attack symbiotes such as scything talons, rending claws, or both. Tyranid warriors are very adaptable, as seen by their capacity to mutate and generate new biomorphs in response to strategies employed by their adversaries, or to capitalize on weaknesses. Because of this, they pose a significant danger on the battlefield and are a key instrument in expanding the will of the hive mind. 
At this point, the planet itself is dying. The Hive Fleet's bioships are continuously unleashing clouds of spores as the assault happens. These spores begin the process of altering the prey world to suit the Great Devourer's needs and prime the world for its absorption. Non-Tyranid life is eliminated from the oceans, the lands, and the atmosphere, as well as the air itself, the water, and all organic life. Everything is decomposed and prepared for absorption, while the planet's defenders are still being butchered, primed for their own consumption. In situations where sheer numbers are not enough to defeat the defensive systems of the planet, the hive mind may direct heavier forces to aid in the battles being fought. If a defense position appears to be hard to overcome, the hive mind is quick to adjust its strategy. It is possible to employ raveners and trigons to burrow under defenses and launch attacks from behind or beneath the enemy lines. Molochs also serve this purpose. They are colossal worm-like tyranid bioforms that burrow themselves, traveling deep underground to bypass any defenses and then emerge behind the enemy. To destroy supply lines, command posts, or artillery batteries, then vanishing back underground before their foe can even retaliate. Severe earth tremors have been recorded in every instance of a Moloch attack, becoming the primary indicator that such an attack is imminent. The unrelenting main assault is led by large creatures such as Carnifexes and Hive Tyrants, which are heavily protected and armed with advanced bioweapons. Carnifexes are actual living weapons of mass destruction that are immune to damage from gunshots and small arms fire because of the thick carapace that covers their bodies and protects their most important organs from harm. They are typically armed with the most cutting-edge tyranid bioweapons, such as venom cannons or barbed stranglers and their primary purpose is to serve as shock troopers in order to breach walls and reinforced gates, launch frontal shock assaults on entrenched enemy positions, and besiege fortified locations and armored vehicle formations. On the other hand, Hive Tyrants are massive creatures that serve as the main commander of a Tyranid Swarm, a Synapse creature that stands tall above the lower bioforms. Hive Tyrants are arguably the most important creature on the battlefield, since they wield enormous psychic powers, and it is said to have the deepest synaptic link with the Hive Mind compared to any other Tyranid bioform. Standing over six meters tall, they tower over dreadnoughts and are covered in hard and thick carrots, making them hulking monsters that would impose their will even to the strongest of enemies. They also display a wide variety of physical characteristics, biomorphs, weaponry, and more, suggesting they are more individual than any other tyranid creature, in a way that is yet to be fully understood these terrifying monsters have a mind so cunning, keen, and tactically aware that can surpass the galaxy's finest strategists. They were created for one purpose, to outthink their prey, in addition to overpowering it. In the event that a hive tyrant is killed in combat, 
a new one will be developed in a hive fleet to take its place. This new hive tyrant will have access to the same information and memories as its predecessor. Research is being conducted on how to combat this, as it would only spell the inevitable doom of every race in the galaxy if hive tyrants are not able to be stopped. It is important to note, though, that creating these specimens requires a considerable amount of bioresources and time. So the high fleets need to be strategic when it comes to creating and deploying these fearsome creatures to lead the innumerable hordes forward. It is safe to say that at this point the defenders have thrown everything they have at their disposal against the Tyranids. Every strategy, every terrain advantage, every military resource, every desperate measure is being used or has been used by this point. The majority of times to no effect against the overwhelming forces of the Tyranids. Massive, towering beasts are deployed to serve the purpose of being living artillery cannons. They fire at any remaining gates, walls, buildings, any structure that still stands. They fire at any defender who still fights, or any surviving inhabitants that still stands its ground against the infinite tyrannid swarms that now floods everything. The famed Biovore, for instance, is responsible for the maintenance and development of an ongoing clutch of spore mines, living bombs that spread poisons, acids, and jagged chitin shards around the battlefield, covering their opponents and making combat difficult for them. They advance in combat by thumping forward and anchoring themselves into the ground with protrusions on their forelimbs. At the same time, they launch their foul payload from a dorsal opening, triggering a powerful and shuddering muscle spasm that throws the projectiles forward. So it is that the Tyranids advance and devour everything in their path in a cruel series of waves of destruction and death. Charging forward to establish battlefronts, that can be hundreds of kilometers long. The assault is overwhelming to their opponents, with the Tyranids using sheer numbers and strategic assaults on key points to overrun their prey. They attack in waves, each wave more powerful than the last, each wave adapted to counter the strategies used against them. At this point, even eliminating the Hive ship would not avert the damage already done. More so, the invading forces have firmly established an overwhelming presence on the target planet. The objective to defend can be considered lost by now. Even while the most aggressive bioforms continue to engage in combat, with the last pockets of defenders of the now doomed planet. Other creatures begin sweeping up behind them and collecting all of the valuable biomass. Any remaining defenders are inevitably devoured or are fleeing for their lives, only to still be devoured shortly thereafter. The final stage of a Tyranid invasion is consumption. This is when the Tyranids begin to absorb all of the biological matter on the planet. Untold thousands of rippers, which resemble maggots, are dropped from the sky to form enormous swarms that are packed closely together. With their mouths full of fangs, they eat whatever organic matter they come across, whether it be living or dead. 
They use their powerful jaws and acid to break down organic material, leaving behind only barren rock and ash. The consumption is swift and efficient, with the Tyranids leaving nothing behind. They consume all living creatures, from the smallest insects to the largest animals. They even consume the planet's atmosphere and its oceans, leaving behind only a lifeless husk. After these abominable things swallowed all that could be eaten, they drag and tumble their bloated bodies into the digestive pools created by the capillary towers which extend tall against the skies and serve to gather all the dead biomass. These large capillary towers also grow in even the deepest parts of the planet's oceans, and as they continue to expand, they might even be able to alter the tidal flow of the planet, as their potent metabolic filtration systems continue to draw in all biomass to the hive bioships above. New rippers are continuously created to propagate the morbid cycle of consuming the planet. The tunnels excavated by trigons and raveners are expanded by burrowing variations of rippers, which also consume any subterranean fungus, root systems, and any other underground creatures they encounter. Mineral deposits are also being exhausted. Notably, rare ores and material that can be combined into the exoskeletons of the many biomorphs and upgrades that the hive mind deem adequate for future organisms. Always adapting, always evolving. After the planet's resources have been completely harvested and processed, the Tyranid fleet's hive ships will begin to absorb the biomaterial that has been produced as a result. This biomaterial will be used to fuel the creation of new Tyranid organisms and will adapt the Hive Fleet for future invasions. While this is going on, a substantial amount of the capillary towers are also being dismantled so that the biomass they contain can be reabsorbed by the Hive ships above. It is argued at this point, the only option is to perform an exterminatus of the planet. It is far past the turning point and is no longer salvageable. And by destroying what remains, the defenders are at least denying the biomass to the great devourer to feed, and it can no longer be used to evolve the fleet for further attacks. Although this method may not always be the most viable, and even then, it is probable that at this stage the High Fleet's many bioships would have eliminated any remaining ship or orbital weapon capable of doing such a thing. Once the planet has been stripped of all life and resources, the Tyranids move on to their next target leaving behind a barren and lifeless husk of a world. This horrifying depiction of the Tyranids' unrelenting quest of biomass and their ability to adapt and evolve is shown through the process of planetary absorption. This method not only ensures the destruction of the entire planet that has been invaded, but it also strengthens the Hive Fleet making it an even more powerful opponent in future instances of further invasions. The ravenous hunger of the Tyranids, along with their ability to assimilate and adapt to new environments, makes them one of the deadliest things in the galaxy. The Tyranids are unlike anything the Imperium of Man or any other race on the galaxy has faced. Their ability to psychically command through their synapses and the ever-present hive mind being connected to every battle 
makes it almost impossible to keep up with their rapid evolution and their countless bioforms. One might think that perhaps understanding this hive mind and the creatures that genetically splice new tyrannid broods would be the key to stemming the infinite tide. We hope you have enjoyed this lore presentation. If you like this episode, you can watch how the Tyranids were first discovered and how they fought against the full might of the Ultramarines. Or you can also relive one of the deadliest battles in the history of the Imperium, the Drop Site Massacre, during the timeline that would later be called the Horus Heresy. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.